The latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. There will be several dozen shows trickling in over the months. Accessibility. We're, we're actually running a pilot scheme with the CNIB at the moment. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to another edition of Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here. I am Mark Aflalo. Before we bring Stephen Scott on board, I want to remind you that if you want to get in touch, it's feedback at ami.ca, of course, our email address. On Twitter, it is at Double Tap Canada. And use the hashtag at Double Tap, and we will get to your questions on a future show, I promise. Stephen Scott, welcome to another week. I'm so excited to be able to be bringing you guys this show during the summer. I don't know what it is about the weather that just makes me excited about being alive, even though we're kind of still stuck at home. It's, it's fun to be here. Don't you feel the same? Yeah, do you know, it is, it's lovely to get some sunshine. Uh, that does make a difference. I must admit, it doesn't happen very often in Scotland. Uh, we refer to the sunshine here as that big yellow UFO in the sky. Um, but, you know, the good news is it is out today. Uh, so when we do a bit of a walk around today, you might actually spot some sunshine in the background, Mark. You know, last week we, we took the show outside and we talked about some of the outdoor summer tech that you can use in your backyard. We're gonna do a little bit outside today too because we're gonna be talking all about our smart homes. Now, this is one of those conversations, Stephen, that I think we could probably spend hours upon hours talking about because there's so many different aspects, whether it comes to how you network your home, to how you integrate smart home devices. There are flashy ways of doing it so that when you walk into a house, there's a giant screen waiting for you. I don't know about you, but I've gone for the subtle approach where the smart home devices are there, but if you're not paying attention and you don't actually get pointed out, you wouldn't even know they're in my home. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think technology, smart technology has become very subtle. You know, whether it be like we'll talk about smart lighting or whether it be smart audio systems or, uh, you know, any kind of smart technology which is actually built into the fabric, in some cases, the actual fabric of our homes. Uh, you know, it, it really has evolved to a place where what I call wife friendly. If it isn't wife friendly, if my wife doesn't get on with it, it ain't coming into the house. And that's the thing with a lot of the technology that we have here, especially I have, is that it, it's kind of baked into the house. But is also very easy to use. Now, now, smart home devices really serve two purposes, right? They, they are great for automating things in your home and being able to control things by voice. But on the accessibility side, when these things were introduced, I don't think they were necessarily introduced because it would help for accessibility, but the I guess the ramifications or I guess the, the downfall or the, the positive side, obviously, is that these are incredible devices and incredible ways to control things that you necessarily weren't able to do prior, right? Yeah, I mean, look, I'll take smart lighting as a great example of this. Now, for most people, smart lighting is the ability to control the lighting when they're out of the house or on holiday. You want to make sure you've got control over lighting so that people think you're home. People, you know, you can use your smart lighting to turn on and off so you think and can fool people into thinking you're in the house. Uh, it's also quite smart as well if you want to make sure that you uh, make it look as if you're nobody's home when someone comes to the door you don't want to speak to. You can just kill all the lights in the house and no one's home. Um, but, you know, for disabled people, there are some real advantages to this. You know, for someone uh, like myself who lives with serious problems with light, uh, where, you know, any kind of light source can be a, a real problem for me. And yet my wife has the exact opposite problem. She wants lots of light. So we're able to manipulate the lighting, make it brighter, make it dimmer, depending on who's in the room at the time. And all she has to do is ask her smart speaker to enable her settings and she's able to get the light nice and bright. And when I walk in, I can have them nice and low. So, you know, just a simple thing like that can make a real difference to a blind person's life. For disabled people, the ability to control lighting without having to move around the home all the time, turning lamps on and off, reaching down to get switches, reaching up to get to light sources, all of that can go away just by simply using your voice or your smartphone, hey, even your TV or a smart speaker. You know, I guess we really are close to that AI dream of Iron Man fame, right? Where you could just have a conversation <laughs> with some kind of robot, some kind of AI, and based on that conversation, things happen, and that robot or that AI does something. And we're getting pretty close to that, are we not? Uh, you know, you think about the technology, and I'm going to talk later about uh, a, a vacuum cleaner, which is completely automatic. I mean, this is a lazy nerd's dream. <laughs> uh, you know, the idea of just being able to sit, up, sit there with your feet up, with your laptop on your lap, working away on stuff, 
and the house is being tidied around you. You know, you get your dishwasher on. Uh, you can even get smart mowers, uh, smart mops. You know, it's all of your housework can be taken care of. Uh, the only thing I haven't found yet is a way to iron my clothes automatically. I'm sure it's coming, but I really wish it would hurry up. You know, Stephen, the Panasonic actually has an ironing and steaming robot that will not only iron your clothes and make sure it's all clean and ready to go, but it'll fold it at the same time. So uh, that is coming. Oh, uh, well, is, it a, I, is it affordable, I though? Like, no. I'm buying it now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you are. Once I send you the link and you see the price tag, I'm not sure you're going to want to find yeah, a place for that in your yeah. home. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and we're going to take advantage of our, our time in this week's show and actually walk you through some of the smart home devices that we've got going in our home. Hopefully it'll give you some idea of things that you can do if you aren't already down this rabbit hole. Um, but uh, hopefully we'll, we'll give you some good insight into what we're doing. We'll start with Steven and then we'll dive into me and we're going to show you all the cool things that we've got going. Again, I've got the subtle approach. Yours is subtle as well. So let's take a quick break. Again, if you guys want to get involved, it's feedback at AMI.com. And of course, on Twitter, it is at Double Tap Canada with the hashtag Ask Double Tap. We take a quick break and come back right here on Double Tap TV. Love Double Tap TV? Listen to AMI Audio for Double Tap Canada every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for news and reviews on everything tech. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. I am Marco Flalo and Stephen Scott is standing by at his home. But before we get to him, I want to remind you that if you want to get involved, the email address is feedback at ami.ca. On Twitter, you can find us at Double Tap Canada. Use that hashtag, Ask Double Tap. Stephen, let's head into your home. Yes, here I am, Mark. Uh, welcome to my humble home. Uh, you've been here before, remember? You were here in the kitchen. We did the demonstration of a lot of the uh, wonderful appliances that I use, all of the smart tech that exists in the kitchen. Well, today I thought I'd show you some of the other smart tech that exists in the home. I mean, from the very entrance to the house, there is smart technology leading all the way in right through the house. At the beginning, we've got the Ring video doorbell, which is just an incredible device. One push of a button outside immediately sends an alert to my phone telling me that there's someone at the front door. Who's there? I can answer, I can find out, I can see. It's also being recorded as well, so if I'm unsure as to who the person is, I can share that video with either people in the community uh, who live around here, or I can share it with friends and family who can actually see who it was at the door and, and check for me in case there's anything nefarious going on. Now, I've been very lucky that hasn't happened here, but it's all about security, isn't it? It's about security, but it's also about just knowing who's at the front door. You know, how many times have you come out of the shower and the doorbell's gone and you thought, oh, I can't answer the door right now. Well, uh, that's really simple because you've got the Ring video app that's on your iPhone. You can answer the phone via that, answer the door via that, and you're able to have a communication with the person outside. Hey, these days, with the updates that have come along to the Ring Video doorbell, you can even answer via your Amazon Echo device. All you have to say is, hey lady, who's at the front door? And she will tell you. And, and you can actually begin to have a conversation with the person at the door through your Amazon Echo device. No screen required. Now, as you move into the house, I like all houses, every house these days pretty much has an alarm system in it, doesn't it? Well, my alarm is, is kind of smart. I say kind of smart because it is connected online and it is able for me to remotely arm and disarm. So should there be a situation where someone's been at the door, maybe knocked the door too hard, the motion sensors in the door have actually picked that up and it's actually set the alarm off. Well, I don't have that worry because I can actually disarm the alarm remotely, which is absolutely fantastic. So that's just coming into the house. Now you might also notice there are obviously lots of lights in this house, tons of lighting, as you would expect in a visually impaired person's house, right? But these lights are smart lights. They are IKEA trad free lights. And these lights are connected to a central hub upstairs, which control all of these lights, which tell them when to go on, when to go off. And either I can do it via voice command through my Amazon Echo device. I can ask to turn the hall lights on or off, but they're also motion sensor as well. There's a little motion sensor that I can actually go to and just by walking in the front door, it senses that motion because of where I've placed the motion sensor. It means that when I come into the house and my wife comes into the house on a dark night, immediately the hall lights come on and illuminate the hallway. It's about safety, it's about security, and of course, huge amounts of geekery and fun as well. Now look, there's loads more to show you. So, so come on in, Mark, come on in. Now when you come to my house, Mark, you might be forgiven for thinking that I've got 
Only the best audio gear, you know, the greatest hi-fi separates, the best speakers. No, none of that. I will talk about audio a bit later. But in my home, one of the smartest things I have here, actually, is my television. Now, there are tons of things you can do with a smart TV these days. You can use your smart assistant on there. You can use apps to control a lot of the technology that's already existing in the house, like the smart lights we talked about. But you can also get audio-described television programming. And that's really important for me. So many shows now are audio-described, whether it be the big drama from Netflix or some new film that's on Amazon Prime or whether it's the latest series that's just appeared on Apple TV. So much content now is audio-described and it's absolutely fantastic to enjoy. On a TV like this, I've got a Samsung 75-inch here. You might think, why have this? I mean, this is ridiculous. And it is ridiculous because I can barely really see it. But the truth is, I just got it in a great deal and I wanted it, okay? So I got one. But the thing is, it's not so much the TV itself I'm interested in. It's what I can connect to it and how I can make it not only smart, but accessible. Now, what I've got here is an Apple TV. And with this Apple TV, I'm able to navigate this entire system using just my voice and the Apple remote control that it comes with. So here I have the TV and I can go through all the various options. Films. Row 1, column 2, top shelf content available. So it's telling me I'm in movies and I can scroll up. Purchased. Once upon a time in America. Two of two. So this is a movie that I've purchased once upon a time in America. I bought that movie. If I want to watch it, I can and I can watch it with audio description as well because I've chosen this movie because it has audio description. Uh, I've also... Underwater. One of two. I've got Underwater as well, another movie again I can go and watch later. Now I'm able to do all this, listen to the descriptions, watch the movie, all thanks to just a simple little touch remote that you get with the Apple TV, no extra t technology or accessories or bits required, just the technology that you buy on st in store, and I can use this like anybody else. I can change the voice, I can speed up the voice, I can change the, the rate of speech, I can change the background, I can change the colour settings, I can change the text size. There's so much you can do with this, depending on your level of vision. Now, Mark, I'm sitting down here cross-legged on the floor for good reason. Not because I can't get up and I'm stuck, although there could be some truth to that, but actually because I want to show you this. This is iRobot's brand new Roomba i7 Plus robot vacuum cleaning solution. Now, what does this do? What is its purpose in life? Well. It is essentially a robot vacuum that uses artificial intelligence to map out your home and clean it for you every day, every night, on a set schedule, whatever you choose. You're in complete control. But first, let's take a look at it. This is a cylindrical device. Um, it is a thickness of what I would call a good cake. If you think of a good birthday cake, that kind of heft, that's what we're talking about here. It doesn't have icing or cake on it, but I'm sure at some point it'll have plenty in it, it's a, especially in from my house. But let's talk about the device, not cake, for a minute, although we should get back to cake at another time, I think. Um, let's talk about how this operates. There are three buttons on here. Um, there is essentially a home button, which tells the device to go back to its little base here. Uh, there's a clean button, which is a sort of automatic get on with it type of button that just says, right, get to cleaning. And there's a spot button, which is more for individual targeted bits of cleaning that you want it to do. Maybe there's a particular area you really want it to focus on, maybe stop and really focus on that area, maybe a stubborn stain, for example. So that's all great, but there's a lot more this thing can do and there's a lot more you can do with it, courtesy of the iRobot Roomba app. Now the app that comes with this device, the one you would download onto your smartphone and use, will actually help you be able to navigate and try out all kinds of wonderful things, including setting those schedules, pairing your iRobot Roomba vacuum up with Lady A. So you can literally speak into the air, room, ask Roomba to start cleaning, and Roomba will go off and start cleaning for you. As simple as that. And you can even tell Lady A to stop Roomba cleaning, and it will go back to its little base. And then what it's doing initially is it's mapping out the area. So it is maybe moving around in odd ways, maybe diagonally, up, down, back, forward turning around a lot, deciding where it should go next. It's mapping out your house area. And over time, it will actually learn the space so it will know the areas it needs to focus on. And of course, more importantly, the areas to avoid. If you have, like we have, some really nice oak furniture here, we don't want it constantly getting bashed into by this device. It learns to know where this furniture is and how to keep away from it. But more importantly, clean around it as well, thanks to that edge brush that it's got built in as well.
Now once it's finished with its cleaning cycle, it will automatically return to its little charging base, wherever you've chosen to put it in the house, as long as you don't move it, obviously, it will find its way back. And uh, attached to the charging base for the i7 Plus is this over, say, maybe a foot high uh, waste bin, which you can open up and inside you will find the little bag, the little vacuum bag, which you can eventually empty once it's full. Uh, again, all of this information about whether the bag is full, uh, when indeed the Roomba itself is full, is all given to you on your smartphone. So again, there's no need for you to have to see anything or worry about anything here. This will take care of itself. The Roomba just handles itself. You have complete control over the app. And if, if there are any issues or any problems, this will tell you. The Roomba will tell you via the app. There is also incredibly, a voice inside the robot as well. So you will sometimes hear the robot say, I need to charge, I'm going home, or you know whatever language it chooses to use to tell you it's kind of had enough for the day, which is incredible, but it's brilliant as well. Great audio, audible feedback for us as blind people. I think this is a brilliant device for a lot of people. And I think for disabled people who struggle with mobility, I think for blind people who struggle, maybe have to have someone come in, clean the house, this gives you back a sense of independence. You're now in control. Your house can be cleaned 24 hours a day. You don't have to worry about those stubborn stains anymore because every single day, this device is going to be going around cleaning your house. You don't have to worry about the, the place getting dirty again because if you spill a couple of crumbs on a Friday night, by Saturday morning, they're gone. So really interesting device. I wanted to finish off with that, Mark, because I think it's a brilliant device. It does add a lot of independence. It's also really sexy looking as well, if I'm honest, inside the home. And you know what? It's just brilliant technology that just makes a difference, not just to you, but to your home. That, that does look like a lot of fun, but I've got my smart home lined up. After we take a quick break, I will go outside and bring you through my home. It is Double Tap TV. He is Stephen Scott. I am Marco Flalo. Thank you guys for being here. We'll head into my home after a quick break. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. I am Stephen Scott. You're probably wondering why Marco Flalo's not doing this bit. Uh, that's because he's... Well, elsewhere at the moment, shall we say. But before we go to him, uh, where he is, let me tell you how you can get in contact with us here at Double Tap TV. We are at Double Tap Canada on Twitter, and you can email us feedback at ami.ca. Get in touch. We love to get your comments. All right, let's go to Mark. Now, Mark, are you outside? As you can tell, I've changed my location, but that's because it's my turn to talk about my smart home. Okay, Stephen, you sit aside. I'm going to sit here and talk about the things that I have in my smart home. Now, one of the things you may not even realize and the things I love about smart home devices these days is that you can go subtle or you can go pretty flashy. I went the subtle route and I go for smart home devices that kind of blend in and you don't even realize that they're there. For example, right behind me, you can see my home. There are three smart home devices that are already in play at my house. If you look in the little front garden here, you can see that I have these spotlights, three spotlights that shine on the bushes. Well, these spotlights are actually Philips Hue spotlights, which means I can control the color, I can control the intensity, I can even create automation tasks thanks to the fact that they are controlled with an app. Moving on to the front steps of my home, there are actually two devices here that are quite pivotal and quite important to what is going on in my smart home. We've got the Schlag Sense Smart Lock. This is a lock that you can have multiple programmable codes. So if you have somebody coming to walk the dog, somebody to clean the house, you can give them their own unique code. You can even set a start time and an end time or specific days of the week that you want that code to be active. This way you can control who comes in and out of your home. I've also got a timer on it. So after four minutes with it being open, it'll automatically turn off, which is a great feature because I don't want to forget to lock the door. Now on the other side of my door is my Ring Video Doorbell. Now I know Steven had the Ring Video Doorbell, but I have the Ring Video Doorbell Pro. What sets this doorbell apart from the other versions is that this one does not have an onboard battery, which means it needs to wire into an existing doorbell that has proper voltage and a proper transformer in place so that it gets ample power to connect to your Wi-Fi network and do everything that you want to do. The other cool thing about this device, or this model anyway, at the time was the highest quality camera, the widest field of view, night vision, motion sensing, sound sensing, lots of very cool things that you can use to monitor who's in front of your home. A lot of 
people put security cameras in front of their house. I chose to go with the Ring Video Doorbell Pro because it looks nice on my actual door as well. And because it has the camera built in, I don't need to actually mess up my outside with other cameras. One of the first things you notice when you walk inside a home, obviously, other than, you know, your vestibule lights and your light switches, is your alarm panel. Now, in my case, this is a traditional alarm panel that isn't really connected to anything smart. Or is it? This is where I love the subtleties of things because this is actually controlled by alarm.com. So I've got control with an app, I've got control with my Apple Watch, and I can even go online and add user codes, remove user codes, give people times of day, etc., etc., which is really cool. Plus, I can use it in automation. So for example, when the alarm turns off, I can have certain lights turned on in the house or I can have notifications sent to people. Or when the alarm is armed, I can have it turn everything down in the house. For example, late at night, you can add it to scenes and you can do various things like triggers with the alarm.com app. Turn your attention over here for a second and you have what look like very simple on off light switches. But these are actually Lutron Cassetta light switches that are tied into the Lutron hub, which comes with a starter kit. Very inexpensive, under $100, you get yourself going. And every light switch in my home is controlled and connected to this app that allows me to also control scenes and create different automations. Plus, of course, turn things on and off remotely. So one of the last devices I wanna show you today is actually one of the first smart home devices I ever bought for myself. It was my entry to the entire smart home system. And that is the Echo B smart thermostat. This is the Echo B4. It has built in Amazon Echo, so you can ask it questions, but you can also use it to set the climate in your home, which is very neat. On board is a motion sensor, so it knows if you're occupying the room that you're actually in right now. It also comes with other smart sensors that are about the size of a coin, and you can put them throughout the home, and those act as actual motion sensors as well, so that if, for example, you've got a multi-level home and you're upstairs because it's bedtime, it knows that you're occupying the upstairs floor of the home and it can push enough cool or hot temperature air to that room to make sure that it's the actual temperature that you want in your house, which is very cool. The other feature as well is it knows your habits. So if you would set the temperature higher or lower at bedtime and it's around the same time every night, it will remember that and it'll actually do, start doing it for you. The last feature I really wanted to talk about was the fact that it knows when you're home or away because again of your habits and that motion sensor. So if you leave your home, it can stop cooling or stop heating to lower your electricity bill. And when you come back, obviously it's going to turn that back on so your house gets to that perfect temperature just in time for perhaps that bedtime routine. So Steven, what do you think about the devices in my home? Because I love the subtlety of everything that's going on here. You don't really know everything is smart, minus for the thermostat maybe because it's got a screen on it, but everything else looks pretty dumb, but acts really smart. Yeah, smart and uh, okay, but not as cool as mine. Yeah, I know it's not a robot vacuum, but it will do. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for being here this week. I hope you enjoyed the tour of our, our two homes. On behalf of Stephen Scott, I am Marco Flalo. If you want to get in touch, no problem. It's feedback at ami.ca. Of course, the email address on Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada. And use the hashtag AskDoubleTap, and we'll get to your questions on a future show. But we answer everything. On behalf of Stephen Scott, again, I am Marco Flalo. Thank you guys for being here on another edition of Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. Hosted by Marka Flalo and Stephen Scott. Editing, Will Attar and Marka Flalo. Production assistants, Wendy Kaufman. Integrated Describe Video Specialist, Ron Rickford. Coordinating Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director Production, Kara Nye. Director Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Programming and Production, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2020, Accessible Media, Inc.